What is up everyone? Today we're doing another one of these Retina MacBook Pro versus Mac Pro 2008 videos. I believe I've done two of these in the past. One was a boot up and shut down race video and the other was a little bit better. That was a disk speed test. It was a benchmark test um, using Blackmagic Disk Speed, whatever the app is called. Um, and it really showed the difference between my Mac Pro's SSD connected to its SATA 2 interface and the MacBook Pro's PCIe based flat storage. So today I'm going to do much more of a real world test, something that actually matters. Now at the moment I am in an interesting situation where I will possibly be selling the Mac Pro as you guys know, um, just so that I can build a Hackintosh and whatnot. So I want to get as many of these tests done as possible. Considering I've started this little series, um, it would be cool to definitely maybe do four, five, even six videos um, comparing these two machines because at the moment they are both my main machines. The MacBook Pro does everything for me in the portable land and the Mac Pro does everything else for me. So that's pretty much all of my video editing and everything that I do when I'm here. So today we're going to use Handbrake, which is an application that I pretty much swear by for all sorts of things. It's open every single day, multiple times a day probably. Um, we're going to use Handbrake to do a little comparison. We've got three different video files and we're basically going to put these two head to head and they're going to race each other. So I'm looking forward to finding out who's going to win. I pretty much know who's going to win. Um, you know, let's face it, the MacBook Pro is a much newer and much quicker machine, but the Mac Pro 2008 can definitely, definitely keep up with even some of the most, you know, expensive new machines out there. It's still a great piece of kit. So without further ado, let's dive right in and talk about the first video file that we're going to convert and also dig out some kind of stopwatch and, uh, and really get started with this race. So from the first file we're going to convert is an episode of The Simpsons. It's from season 19. It has a resolution of 512 by 384 and it's only 150 megabytes in size. So this is about the most basic video file that I own. Um, it's standard definition. It's, well, it's way below standard definition. It's a tiny resolution. It's pretty much a tiny size. Um, but we're still going to give converting it a go because we're going to do three different types of files um, just to really show the difference between these two machines. So what I'm going to do is queue it up on both machines. We have the exact same episodes because I've done all of this. I've prepared myself and did everything before the video, guys. So that's queued up in Handbrake. And what we're going to do just to make everything easier and more fair, it doesn't actually matter what kind of presets and stuff we use and what settings we use because as long as we use the same on both machines, everything will be fair. So I think I'm going to use, if we go up here, I'm going to convert these as if I was going to use them on my iPad. So I'm gonna press iPad in the devices section on both machines. And also, just to make it fair, we're gonna to export to the desktop on both machines, just so they're seeking from their uh, primary disk and writing to their primary disk. So in, uh, okay, let's have a look. I'm actually gonna make a folder called conversions on both guys so it doesn't complain about file names and, uh, and interrupt us and stuff. So I'm gonna make a folder conversions and that is where all of our conversions are gonna go so both machines are queued up ready we are converting a standard definition episode of the Simpsons 150 megabyte in size MPEG-4 movie to uh, the iPad devices preset and what I'm gonna do is queue up the stopwatch on my phone and I'm gonna press start on both machines and then try and hit start on the stopwatch as quickly as possible. So let's queue all this up. Okay, here we go guys. First test, three, two, one, go. Okay, so hopefully on the camera you can see the, uh, the conversion process happening. They should both convert it very quickly. And as, uh, what I'm gonna do is lap as soon as the first machine gives me the dialog box to say that the conversion has finished. So you can see the progress bar at the bottom. This is actually very intense, very exciting. Okay, so the MacBook Pro is nearly done. As you guys can see, I'll press lap as soon as we get the dialog box. There we go, that's lapped. And then keeping my eyes peeled for the Mac Pro to finish going a little bit more and 
that is done. So the MacBook Pro completed in one minute 13 seconds and the Mac Pro completed in one minute 28 seconds. So that's the first test out of the way. We will talk about the results at the end because I'm saving screenshots, but now we're gonna queue up the next video file and that is something a little bit more intense. It is an episode of Sherlock, which is a longer video file. Um, let me just queue up the information about this particular file. So now we have an episode of Sherlock queued up. This is, I believe, the first ever part. Um, it is one hour and 29 minutes long. It's an MPEG-4 movie yet again. It's 1.38 gigabytes in size and the resolution is 1280 by 720. So I already have it queued up on the Mac Pro and we're using, um, just for the hell of it now, the Apple TV 3 preset. So we'll queue it up on the MacBook Pro, Apple TV 3 preset, and it is going to the same folder on both machines. So let's put the cursors in the right places yet again. Dig out the stopwatch and I believe this will actually run a little bit longer because it's high def and everything. So, we're getting ready. Both machines. Three, two, one, go. And we are off. I'm gonna pause the camera because this one's gonna be a little longer than the last one. And uh, let's see who the winner is. So as you guys can see, it's gonna take a while on both machines. We're looking at an ETA of 33 minutes, around 33 minutes on the Mac Pro and around 29 minutes on the MacBook Pro. It, it's averaging at 70 point, yeah, 70 point something FPS. It's changing all the time on the MacBook Pro and around 62 FPS, 61 FPS, anything around there on the uh, Mac Pro. Sticking with 70 FPS on the MacBook Pro, it's kind of evening out now. Uh, going down a little 60 FPS on the Mac Pro. 69 FPS on the MacBook Pro, but pretty much 70. Yeah, so as you guys can see, the MacBook Pro is always just that one little step ahead, the Mac Pro. But considering the age difference, I know one's an eight core desktop and you know, one's a, one's a quad core laptop. But, um, you know, age difference, etc., etc. I am still very proud of my Mac Pro. Now, the reason I'm talking about these ETAs and stuff, guys, is I'm not actually going to let the conversion run to the end simply because I don't have time. I'm very pushed for time today. So, I actually want to get to my final test, which is a much more important test to me, and that is converting one of my YouTube videos. So, we can pretty much take from this that the outcome will be very similar to what it was with the standard definition episode of The Simpsons. This is a very long video file, so it's gonna take a while to convert, as you guys can see. I didn't have another 720p video file to try. I don't really have many, um, because I pretty much rip everything in 1080, um, or convert everything in 1080. Everything I do is, is 1080 if I can, so don't have a lot of 720 stuff. Um, it's either standard def or it's 1080, put it like that. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to move on to the next segment because, like I say, I don't have time. I'm so sorry that I don't have time to see out this conversion to the end, but you guys can roughly, you can roughly tell what it's going to be like. Um, we're dipping, but they tend to dip and they go back up. It's always like this, fluctuating, so yeah. So guys, for me, this is the real world test. As you guys can see, I've queued up last Friday's video, I believe it was. Um, it's 1.17 gigabytes in size. It's 11 minutes, 42 seconds long, 1920 by 1080. It's a quick time movie, so it's a .mov file. I've queued it up on the Mac Pro. Time to queue it up on the MacBook Pro. Now the preset that I'm gonna use is actually a custom preset, which is identical on both machines. Um, apart from the name, actually, it's just called YouTube on, on my MacBook Pro, but it's called YouTube Conversions on my Mac Pro. It does a couple of things. It mainly compresses the files so that I can upload it. And um, there's a couple of tweaks here and there. Um, but I do run all of my videos through Handbrake. Um, so it's, it's gonna be so interesting to me to see which machine is quicker um, because when I edit videos and, and uh, run videos through Handbrake on the MacBook Pro, it definitely feels quicker. So let's see if the difference is something really worth talking about or whether it's just really small. Let's queue everything up. Cursor's in the right place. Stopwatch is open. Three, two, one, go. And we are off. Now this preset is a preset that I've been using for quite a while now. Um, 
Something's telling me that I've been using these exact same settings since pretty much when I started to use Final Cut Pro 10, um, which was, I don't know, I've been using Final Cut Pro 10 for quite a while now, but I export in the highest possible quality from Final Cut Pro 10 um, and let Handbrake do all the compression just because that's the quickest way that I've found to be able to do it. As you guys can see, both machines are actually chugging through this video at a decent speed. Handbrake conversions are definitely one of the quickest um, parts of uh, producing an IMNC YouTube video. The slowest part is obviously uploading, but that happens overnight, so it doesn't really affect me. Um, the medium in the middle thing is sort of exporting from Final Cut, sort of tends to take double the amount of time that Handbrake does to compress the files. But we're up to approximately a minute already. And of course, when one machine finishes, I'll press lap, and when the other finishes, I'll press stop, and we can compare both of the times. So guys, both machines are doing really well the MacBook Pro is slightly ahead of the Mac Pro and it is definitely gonna win we know this for a fact as it did in the first test and as it would have probably well you know 99% chance that it would have in the second test here we go waiting for the dialog box boom lap there we go at four minutes 45 seconds roughly and now we're just waiting for uh, the Mac Pro to finish and here we go Mac Pro's coming to the end, any second now, you can do it, here we go, here we go, done. Okay, so the comparison that we have for the most important test of the entire video then, the MacBook Pro did it in 4 minutes and 45 seconds pretty much, and the Mac did I say the MacBook Pro? Yeah, the Mac Pro did it in five minutes and pretty much 47 seconds. So, there's about a minute between them on that particular YouTube conversion, and of course it will be the same on pretty much every YouTube conversion, you know, in, in relativity between the video files, etc. Um, but as you guys can see, People talk about my MacBook Pro as if it's light years ahead of my Mac Pro. And I get comments like, oh, Tom, I can't believe you don't dock your MacBook Pro and, you know, sell the Mac Pro and use your MacBook Pro for everything else. As you guys can see, with the advantages that I get from the Mac Pro being a desktop, there's definitely not, not that much in it in terms of speed with this particular test anyway. Um, so it's all very, very interesting. And of course, an interesting point to note is I haven't shown you any graphs, any numbers, any temperatures, and this is about as scientific as me throwing a couple of machines on the desk and jabbing a stopwatch pretty much very inaccurately in terms of science. But you know, that's just what I'm like. This is all about real world performance. How does the machine feel when you use it in real life? I mean, these numbers are all well and truly good and everything, and I'm so glad for them. I mean, I, I listen to benchmarks a lot, but this is truly real world performance. And it's very interesting to see that yes, the MacBook Pro is quicker, but the Mac Pro still really, really holds up well. What, what are we talking, seven years later? Roughly, yeah, seven years later. So it's absolutely bonkers. I've had the machine for four years. It's been out for seven years and it's still just absolutely really, really dominating. And, and I love it. Um, you know, it's not kind of, it, it's a big decision to make when it comes to selling the Mac Pro and, and getting a Hackintosh and all this stuff, but yeah, as you guys can see, it's still a beast machine. So one thing I'd like to point out, I know I wasn't on about graphs, temperatures and numbers, but one small thing I would like to say about temperatures and stuff is the fans on the MacBook Pro will always ramp up to definitely an audible level. And the machine, to the touch, will heat up definitely every single time I use Handbrake, whereas the Mac Pro stays in the exact same state and I can't even hear the fan spinning up at all. Um, it just stays in pretty much the exact same place as it it does when it's idle pretty much. I rarely hear the Mac Pro ramp up. Now this is of course because the MacBook Pro is a much smaller system and the cooling system of course for it is, is really pretty damn good for what it is. Um, you cram in so much power into such a small case. But of course I'm not really here to compare anything other than my usability of both machines. So the video test probably out of all the videos definitely compared to the last two videos and probably compared to 
the rest of the comparison videos that I do. The video conversion test is definitely one of the most important that you guys will see. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, I'm sorry that it wasn't more scientific, but as you guys know, I don't really do that kind of thing on this channel. It is mainly to do with my usage of the machines and I love them both. They both have, a, have their place. They both do extremely well and I wouldn't change either of them. Um, at this exact moment in time. As you guys know, the Hackintosh could be replacing the Mac Pro, but not at this precise moment in time because I'm not quite ready to do so yet. So, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please give this video a massive big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Of course, feel free to give it a thumbs down if you did not enjoy it, and please explain why in the comment section if you did give me a thumbs down. Of course, I'm here every single day, Monday to Friday, uploading videos, five videos a week for your entertainment. I work really hard doing so, so I hope you're all really appreciative, and I, of course, appreciate every single view that I get. You guys are truly amazing, and I couldn't do it without you. So, rambling aside, I'll see you in tomorrow's video. This has been another test. Check that out. Almost synchronized screensavers. And I think that's pretty much my cue to shut the hell up and start recording the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.